guys, it's Miss Nicole Morgan, and we are back with some more little guardsmen. I'm excited to see where the game is going. Last time we ended part one, so now we are officially on part two of the game. Um, and let's see what that has in store for us. What kind of choices we get to make, what, what's going on here. Okay, so I'm gonna continue. The Sprawl, news about the war. On the front lines, our homegrown heroes are holding toe-to-toe -to -toe against the pungent Petrodians. But back in the barracks, folks from home and away are signing up to do their part. You might even find the odd Petrodian joining our ranks to fight against their own. Go get them, soldier! Okay, so and now we're get them once for me! Talk to your local Godshed operator about how you can join the Sprawl Army today! Join the Sprawl Army today! Okay. Any questions? Did you see my dad? He was there. He looked okay. Oh, her dad is at war now. I feel like I have to take some responsibility for that. No, I meant questions about the new drafting procedure. It was in the weekly update video. You mean the propaganda video? You know what propaganda is? I didn't until I watched that video. <laughs> Listen, people are going to come up asking about joining the army. It's your job to decide if they're a good fit, especially considering who else is coming to enlist that day. I thought my job was to decide who to let pass the gate. That's also your job. This is wartime. You have to do two things now. Okay. <laughs> I wish my dad was here. He'd show me how to get out of doing two things. Up until now, we've tolerated a two-star average with you, Guardsmen. Not anymore. We are dancing on a knife's edge here, so now you have to maintain a 2.5-star average, or it's game over. Oh, and if you don't draft the right people, we could lose the war. Also game over. Oh no. Wait, figuratively or literally? Both. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, um... I could get a game over. Well, I'm gonna go. You're just gonna leave after dropping something that heavy on me? Fine, I'll stay. We can tutorial some more. Actually, I'm starting to see the appeal okay. of your first plan. <laughs> I don't want a tutorial anymore. I thought you might. Goodbye, Lil. Okay. Level 8. So now I have to decide who to let in through the gate and who I should draft for war. Okay, let's see. The Royal Writ. After months of this siege, the Sprawl's resources, namely its food stores, have reached a new dangerous low. If a guard discovers any means to improve our dwindling food supply, you are to contact myself or Lieutenant Skylar. Failure to contact leadership will be reflected in your star ranking, Ash. Related, any individuals or groups coming from outside the Sprawl who will burden our meager food supply are to be carefully vetted. Like with item one, the decision to admit anyone who fits this description should be run by either Ash or me, Striker. Best of luck to those becoming responsible for drafting individuals for service on the front lines. Remember, there's always more than meets the eye, and although it may seem like sending more people to the fray is the right idea, that is not always the case. Striker. So don't just send everyone. Uh... Hey, Gardos. I'm breaking in a new assistant down here in the dungeon. Go easy on him if you get him when you call. Oh, oh. So he has a new assistant. So if I call, his assistant is going to answer. Isn't that... I think his assistant is a little goblin I met in one of the last episodes, though. The whelp, I think. Okay. Always x-ray. X-ray is just, like, the best. Uh, let's do a decoder. I feel like metal detector is just a worse x-ray. Truth spray. Let's do another whip. And let's do another decoder just in case. And then I'll throw this yellow one in that whip. Yeah, I think that's fine. Excuse me, ma'am. Is this the place where a fella could sign up to join that war that's going on? 
I just noticed they took all my weapons away. I had all those swords here, and now I have a bomb, and then all the barracks, like the... I'm only keeping my little shed thing half open, and then I have all like the... Uh, what are these things called? Barbed wire and bags of dirt, or whatever. Hey, what, what did you say? It is. Why? Do you know someone who's looking to sign up? Sure do, ma'am. His name is Elmer John, and you're looking at him. I'm talking about me, ma'am. Okay, so you would like to yeah, join. Yeah, I got that. Mm, let's talk to him. Now, what's a guy like you doing wanting to fight in a war like this? I fight for one thing and one thing only. My one and only love, Glory Ann. Trust? That's very heroic, I guess. This Glory Ann, is she your sweetheart? She sure is. And does Glory Ann feel the same way about you? She sure does. At least, I thought she did. You thought she did? Let's truth spray him. Tell me your secrets. I can't believe Glory Ann would do me wrong like she'd done me and be caught in the arms of another man. I guess I could have talked to her about it, but the minute I saw her and that love Bosco together, I jumped to the first conclusion in my head and left town to do the first thing I thought of doing. Okay, that doesn't really sound like a productive person to be joining the war. Was this the right thing to do? Yes, it's Glory Ann that did the wrong thing. Okay. Dish the details, Elmer. What happened? Well, you see, ma'am, how it is is like... It's like this, you see. It all happened this way it was. It all happened the way it, it was then when when it, it be like it be. And this, you see what like you see. <laughs> Elmer, faster with the dishing. I'm sorry, ma'am. It's just all too painful to talk about. We were engaged to be married, and I caught her in the arms of another man, my neighbor Bosco. I'm gonna doubt. Doesn't sound like much of an engagement then, does it? She took my ring and promised to be my wife. Then she broke that promise the very next day. So you're heartbroken and running away to war? Exactly. I don't really think that's a super awesome idea. I feel like being heartbroken and running away to war, he's not really gonna do anything. Like he's gonna make it worse. So I'm just gonna be like, go home, bro. Go home. Go do something else. I don't think I can. In good conscience, Ooh, send I hope you to that the front, good. Elmer. Go home, find Glorian, and talk to her. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I was making one of those, what do you call it, hasty decisions I always make. That's what it seems like. I'll go home and see my Glorian, who I caught in the arms of another man, and I'll make the biggest apology banner anybody ever saw. Maybe just talk to her. What's an apology banner? It's the easiest way to say you're sorry. So long, ma'am. You take care now. Glory Ann, I'm a coming. Man, he must be a little irritating. Do you know what I mean? Ah, it's you again. Oh my god, this I remember you. The bitch. miserable wretch who sought me the last time I came to this repulsive, simmering carbuncle of a city. I remember you the too. Worst. You're that unpleasant, obnoxious Ebenezer Scrooge knockoff. Yeah, tell him, Lil. Yes, we have met. Yep. Um. Let's talk to him. It is my intention to go straight to the bank of the sprawl and have my substantial monies removed from this sinking barge of a city before the banks are overrun or worse, sacked. Mr. Dunn just needs to hear my confirmation number and I will have my fortune sheltered in a more rich people friendly nation. Uh... I guess trust, because, well, I don't trust him, but I trust that's what he's going to do. You think the bank will be sacked? Most likely, BS will fall in one great lump. Perhaps enough people will continue to buy into BS, but as far as I'm concerned, the people here were up to their necks in BS anyway. We're still talking about the bank, right? <laughs> okay. 
Does he have anything on him? <gasps> Is that like a lunch lunch bag? It looks kind of like a lunch bag. Not that it is oh. any of your business in the slightest, but that photo was taken of me and Welp in happier times. They look extremely happy. He doesn't even have his little hat on. Where is he? Where is he now? That rotten court jester slash dungeon keeper had the audacity to offer that useless goblin a job. Now he's gone. Welp, so beautifully useless. <laughs> okay, and didn't the Ritz... Hey, Gardos, I'm breaking in a new assistant in the dungeon. Go easy on him if you call. So that means Welp is answering the phone. So I'm gonna call Welp. This is the dungeon of Malcolm... Oh. The Great? Just read the cards! Oh, okay. <clears throat> This is the dungeon of Malcolm the Great. May I take a message? Wait, who is this? Who is this? Lil. Oh, Lil, it's me, Well. Well. I thought so. Listen, there's someone here I think would like to speak with you. Go ahead. Well, is it really you? Okay, I think this is gonna work. <laughs> it is, your grace. Okay, okay. Wilb, I never thought I'd see you again. You're actually on the phone. Well, we are on the phone. <laughs> How are you? Have you been treated poorly? No one ever treated me as poorly as you, sir. Weird. I miss you, Well. I miss you too, sir. Come, run away with me. We can leave this world behind love? us and start again with all of my money. Sir, I never cared a jot for your money. I only wanted to be with you. Oh, Welp, my heart sings. No matter what happens to me now, I will dedicate my remaining... What about your remaining money? Okay, this is like a super abusive relationship. I'm just gonna say that. Like, <laughs> no, this is not awesome. I'll donate it to the poor. <laughs> Just kidding. But I won't take it away with me today. Okay, that's good enough, I guess. Good enough. Get in there and reunite with your friend. Yeah, go in. Yeah, true love conquers all. Way to go, Cupid. So weird. Because when I first met him, I was like, you're just like a horrible person. I have literally zero sympathy for you. But I'm like, I guess go be with goblin who could do better oh, hello where is he where's that meek little slunk of a man i have no idea what you're talking about did a hopelessly heartbroken fella by the name of elmer john come by this way spouting a crazy notion like running off and joining the army as a matter of fact he did oh elmer john what have you done tell me did you allow that fool to throw his life away over nothing I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you or not. I don't know if I can't say anything. I have to know if you sent him off to war, because if you didn't send him, then I'd like you to send me to get as far away from that fool as possible. Okay, so you want nothing to do with him anymore, is what I'm hearing. I take it you're Glory Ann. That's me, Glory Ann. The same Glory Ann that was caught in the arms of another man? It's not what it looked like. And if Elmer John had stuck around for more than a second, I could have explained that to him. I'll trust her. And you're sick of these lunk-headed men getting all hot and bothered and making hasty decisions over something that could have been settled by a rational conversation? Exactly! Okay, I don't know if I want to send you to war, though. Even if that fool Elmer John is drafted as well, and he's there waiting for me with his big dumb eyes and his cutie pie dimples, it won't matter. He won't be able to smooth talk his way back into my heart after doing something so stupid like running off and joining the war. At this point, it doesn't matter if you let him in or not. Either way, I've made up my mind. I don't, what have you made, you made up your mind with what? 
love that fierce determination. But you really don't want to know if he was drafted? What if he's at home waiting for you? With a big ol' apology banner that says, I'm a fool, take me back. He's run out of apology banners this time. Him and his suspicious mind. Not to mention the wartime measures prohibiting the sale of fabric for such frivolities. Okay, I'm not sure if she, so she, okay. I sent Elmer home. I didn't let him draft because he just wanted to draft to be heartbroken and upset. But she wants to just be away from him. So I'm debating like, should I just send her to war so she can do that? Maybe I'll call Stryker because maybe Stryker will help me. Would you say she's eager but hot-headed and a willing volunteer with a cold, hard stare that radiates determination? Uh, I guess. We have a place for people like her in the army. And that's here, in the army. Okay. Recruit her with haste. Okay, so Stryker says, yeah, do it. Okay, let's go. She seems like, like... Level now, headed. I'm not doing this because I drafted Elmer John and I want you two to be together. I understand. And I'm not doing this because I didn't draft Elmer John and I'm trying to keep you two apart. Understood. Okay. I'm doing this because I think you'd make a mighty fine soldier, soldier. You're drafted. Okay, she's in. Hello. Goblin approaches, whistling a happy oh, tune. Oh, hello, Lil. Isn't it an absolutely beautiful day? Sun shining, birds chirping. Why, a gobbo could almost sing about it. Hey, nice to see you again. You do. Okay, let's chat with them. I'm just coming from a conference of GLA members from different nations looking to help each other out. The GLA sounds like it's thriving. It sure is. Good. Trust. We made some major inroads with a sympathetic group of Petrardian miners. They've offered to dig tunnels that will bring food to the sprawl without Ooh. anyone knowing. And we need food. We're in like a food shortage. I hope we can get these plans to Queen Desdemona for her stamp of approval. Then we can get things underway. I'll return them to her. You should take these to the Queen. I'm on my way there now. And I think, didn't the writ say something about food? I mean, food stores. We've reached a new dangerous low. If a guard discovers any means to improve our dwindling food supply, you're to contact myself or Lieutenant Stryker. Okay, so I'm gonna call, um... I'll call Ash. Let's see what she has to say about Tunnel it. plans to increase our dwindling food supplies. Let him in post haste. Let him in. The city's best and brightest will go over the map and construction will begin in no time. We have food. We have food. Well done, child. Woo. I'm just going to let him right in. I trust uh, the goblin. I've met them before. I've, you know, protested with them. We're we good. You go in. Do your Will, thing. It is always a pleasure. Julian, I hope you have a fantastic day. Do you really mean that? Yes. I sincerely do. Keep up the great work, friend. Thanks, Lil. You're one of the good ones. Yay! Yay! The tunnel plans are underway. Soon there will be more food for the people of the sprawl. Well done. Hell yeah! Okay, good. Sweet. Oh, hello. Hey, Lil. Listen, I wanted to say I know things must be tough for you with Hamish out on the front lines and... Yes. And? And what? The fact that I have to work a full-time job at age 12? Yeah, that's gotta be tough. It's, it's hard, man. And the fact that I live alone on top of a dive bar? Well, you meet some interesting people. And the fact that my dead mom's still dead? Well, yeah, that's pretty rough. Well, if you ever need someone to talk to, you know where to find me. I'm actually not She's sure I do own. know where to find you. 
That sucks that she's on her own now. She doesn't have a mom. She doesn't have her dad is at war. Like, I don't know. Poor oh, Lil. well, normally it would be at the barracks, but for the foreseeable future, I'll be running security for Her Majesty Princess, sorry, Queen Desdemona. Queen. After you finished your shift, Her Majesty and the Royal Consort have asked to see you. Okay. Makes sense. Well, that figures. Me and Desi are pretty tight. <laughs> Who? Desi. Queen Desdemona. It's gonna be a thing. Try to keep up, Cece. <laughs> Who? Cecil. Cece. You. God, it's like you're not even trying. Come on, Cece. Kids these days. What She's meeting mean? with some high-ranking member of the Mages Guild to discuss battle strategy. To be honest, the guild hasn't been very supportive of how Her Majesty has handled things. She was looking for a bit of backup and wanted you specifically. Me? Well, she can count on me. I hope. I hope so, too. The fate of the sprawl may rest in your hands. This it is always true. Does, Cecil. I'll see you after my shift. I've had to make a lot of choices that a 12-year-old shouldn't make. Great, great. Thanks, Lil. And if you write your dad, tell him we all wish him well. I'll just say I will. I'm not going to be rude about I know that. I would love to hear it. See you later, Cecil. I'm not like, no. I want my dad to feel alone. Like, I would never do that. A familiar group of black-clad folk approached the shed weeping and moaning. Hello? You must help us, child. We have been left without shelter. It's awful. Scarborough has fallen. <laughs> These were the same people who had Sprinkles, the cat. Okay, let's talk to them. The Duchy of Scarborough has been under constant siege for the majority of the war. Those bastards! Quite. We finally had to flee. We couldn't stand it any longer. We've been without food for days. Yes, everyone is rather hungry. I feel bad. I'm so sorry to hear that you've had to flee your home. I can't imagine how hard that must have been. Thank you, child. I'm a duchess without a duchy. We have rather a lot of refugees that need your help and your food desperately. Okay, so food was a big deal with Ash and Stryker, so... Oh, okay. So let me call one of them. I'll call, um, Ash again. Let's see oh, what she says. Oh, my breaks for the dear Duchess and the people of Scarborough. While our food supplies remain dangerously low, with the tunnel operation unlocked thanks to you, we should just be able to feed everyone, including these refugees. Oh. You may let them in. Okay, sweet. But with groups like this, do make sure criminals aren't infiltrating the sprawl hiding in plain sight. It's the oldest spy trick in the book. Throw on a cloak, jump from a certainly fatal height into a hay bale, okay. that kind of thing. Isn't that Assassin's Creed? When you jump from the hay bale? If things were different, we'd give you time to interview them individually. But they're not, so do your best and don't mess up. Ta! Okay, so one of them might be a spy, and I think the best way to see if they're a spy is my favorite thing ever, the x-ray. <laughs> it consistently helps me out. He has a le letter envelope, notebook. What you got there? This? Oh, it's just a letter from me aunt. Mind if I read that? Let's see. La la la. Late at night while no one is awake. Blah blah blah. Lower the drawbridge and we will invade. Ba ba ba. Ba ba hmm. ba. Long live Prince Phineas? Um, excuse me. Care You're done. To explain? All right, all right, I did it. I lowered the bridge and let those. Bastards? Right, those bastards. I let them in. It was me. Feel bad. <laughs> Okay, we'll oh, get out of here. Sneak. You are hereby banished from the court of Scarborough. Yeah, the reason Scarborough fell is because of Prince you, Prince Phineas was right. Soon the entire sprawl will fall to the might of the kingdom of Petrad. Thank goodness 
we're not fighting Mavga because I feel like Mavga would just like destroy us. They would completely wreck us. We would not be alive. Oh, go away. But I think we can handle this. Well spotted, Guardian. Listen, I'm just doing my job. And that's how you x-ray your way to success. What does that mean? Excellent line, m'lady. But that was... Oh, never mind. Even with that settled, I'm still not sure what to do with these people. I can let them in now because I got the food source. So we should be good. This I don't think this will cause any issues. There you guys go. Get in here. Bless you, dear child. Yes, thanks awfully. As I said, we are incredibly hungry. There should be enough food for your people. We have a new plan to bring more into the sprawl. Regardless, you are a hero in the history of Scarborough. If our lands are ever restored to us. <laughs> I feel bad. But don't worry, you guys are going to eat. You're good. I did the right thing. In a previous turn, you unmasked a traitor and you were kind to refugees. Four stars. Yeah. That's why we're here. Hello. Where do I enlist? You're there. Here. <laughs> then what are you waiting for? Sign me up already. The name is Bosco. Hello. I heard that lily-livered run Elmer John came by this way, and I want to catch up with him so I can smash his head like a jug. Okay. You're just the kind of guy we're looking for, but I'll need more than just a first name to sign you up. Hulahan. Hulahan. Bosco Hulahan. Okay, Bosco Hulahan. And last thing, why do you want to smash Elmer's head like a jug? Because he's a fool. I mean, I believe you. He is a fool. I trust it's common practice to go around smashing people's heads like jugs where you're from? Only if they're dumb enough to run away from a quality dame like Glorianne. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm gonna talk to. Oh, look! When I go over him on the TV screen, it like highlights him. See? That's super cool. Okay. Um, I'm gonna talk to him again. So to be clear, you're mad that he ran away from Glory Ann? Yes. Because you wouldn't run away from Glory Ann if she wanted you. Yes, but she's made it clear that she doesn't. This little drama is wrapping up quite nicely. It will once I smash Elmer John's head like a jug. Maybe don't do that. Uh, doubt? I don't think a head really smashes like a jug. How does a jug smash? How would you know? Did you grow up with hundreds of jugs around the house because your father was a jugsmith? Jugsmith? What is a jugs? It's a real thing. Is it? Is it actually a real thing, a jugsmith? I'm gonna call Stryker and see what she thinks. Yes, we need all the help we can get out there. But I can't justify taking any more emotionally conflicted soldiers onto the battlefield. If he's gonna get distracted fighting alongside someone he has unrequited feelings for, I'd choose not to draft him. Love and war do not mix. Okay, so if he's just gonna fight that girl, I feel like he'd be a much better fighter. Maybe I need to go back in time. I'm gonna go back in time and not draft her and draft him instead. Cause I think he's gonna be a better fighter than. Yeah, and then I can fly through the other ones. Okay, we're gonna do that. So, boo, we're back with more Bosco. So I didn't change anything. I did the other ones exactly the same, uh, but now we're gonna get this guy in instead. You're there, here. Then what are you waiting for? Sign me up already. The name is Bosco. I heard that lily-livered run Elmer John came by this way, and I want to catch up with him. Okay, smash his head like a jug. Let's talk to him again. You're just the kind of guy we're looking for, but I'll need more than just a first name to sign you up. Houlihan. Okay, Bosco Houlihan. And last thing, why do you want to smash Elmer's head like a jug? Because he's a fool. Okay, I trust I you. I trust it's common practice to go around smashing people's heads like jugs where you're from? 
Only if they're dumb enough to run away from a quality dame like Glorianne. Okay. Um, let's... I'm gonna truth spray him. I wanna see what he has to say if I truth spray him. Like, does he actually want to be in war, or is he just doing I this? I want to join the army so I can find my place, my purpose. Glorianne doesn't want me. I have come to terms with that. Maybe in the army I can find some brotherhood, some kinship with other people who maybe have signed up for the same reasons as me. A broken heart and a desire to break heads like jugs. So he's looking for brotherhood. Um, I think that he's a perfect fit. I'm gonna let him in. I think this is better. He's not gonna be going against, like, Glorianne or Elmer. He's just going on his own to do his own thing with Listen, his own Buster, dudes. We need you. Yeah. My name is Bosco. Yes. I know. But... Listen, Bosco, we need you. <laughs> okay, good. Look out, Elmer John. I'm coming to smash her head like a jug. Well, he's not there, so. Yeah, go get him. If he's there. Honestly, I forget what I did with him. He's perfect. Okay. Yay! Okay, that's my first, like, four. 30 gold. Okay, that was the best shift I did. So, yep. He fell in love. We got Julian with the plans. We got the traitor out. Those are the only three I had to do. And then I just really hope I didn't mess up drafting people. I drafted Bosco and I sent the two people lovers fighting home. Okay, let's go to the war room and see what they want. Which is exactly why we must start using them immediately. The risk is too great. We need more time to study the long-term repercussions. A luxury we can ill afford. Your Majesty, Lil has arrived. Thank you, Cecil. Lil, thank goodness you're here. I've got a problem. You have an opportunity, Your Highness. Mm, she said problem. You know Tyronius Athanatos, I believe. Yes. I've had the pleasure, I guess. Yes, I remember this little guardsman. And Dr. B. Have you met Dr. Beatrix von Matterhorn Lil? Yes. I have. She works at the hole in the ground by the edge of town. Yes, I, I mean, it's an archaeological dig site, but yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, she's the one who gave me the chronometer 3000 on my first day. Ah, so she does have access to power crystal technology. I might have known. Okay. Wait. Lil has had access to power crystal technology this whole time? Maybe it's not as dangerous as we imagined. She seems fine. Um, we don't know that. It's still too early. There were two really scary moments. How so. long can we wait? How many brave soldiers of the sprawl must give their lives before we use the tools we have available? Let me fill you in on what's going on here. The Mages Guild feels that if they had access to power crystals, they could hold back the enemy and maybe even win the war outright. Okay, so why don't they go buy some? I know a guy in an alley. You know what? I'm gonna stop there. It's yeah. starting to sound weird. <laughs> There's a guy in an alley and I buy a bunch from him. They want all the crystals. Access to every dig site and existing stockpile in order to amplify their power. The good doctor could simply give us the blueprints. Or better yet, the working model the child has in her possession. This would allow our research to flourish in no time. You're not taking mine. Dr. Beatrix feels that there are too many unknown variables to use it safely on a larger scale. The Mage's Guild is and always has been reckless. There's no way I'm handing my research over to you. Not until I see the full effects on my human test guinea pig here. Yeah! Wait, what? <laughs> Why am I a guinea we pig? We both knew what this was. I guess. This is true. Well, Lil, you've been using power crystals at the guard shed. What do you think? Are they too dangerous? Well, I did accidentally um, summon a devil, and that was actually pretty traumatizing, so I'm gonna say they're, they're, they're too dangerous. We're not giving them to the mage? They are way too dangerous. I use the chronometer 3000 under very specific circumstances. You start manipulating time out there in the everyday world, who knows where it could lead? 
Spoken like a scientist. Do you have a master's degree? No. How many times do I have to tell you people? I'm 12. Thank you for your counsel. I always appreciate having multiple opinions when it comes to big decisions. I have made up my mind. Dr. B will continue to oversee Lil's progress with the Chronometer 3000, and it will stay out of the hands of the Mage's Guild until we can be certain that it is safe to use in this war. Then at least allow the Guild access to the Crystal Reserve for the sake of the Sprawl's future. For the time being, the Reserve shall remain under my control. For the time being. I don't like you, man. My decision is final, Tyronius. You will find that I am not as easily swayed by you as my father was. Yeah. Okay, it looks like that's what I came here for. Fireball Canyon, Kaladar, Petrard, Marvga, and the Sprawl in the middle. So this, the Sprawl is somewhere just like in the, Oh, here's the Sprawl. Sprawl. Okay, does everyone want to chat with me? Thanks for your insight, Lil. I'm sorry to keep putting you in this position. The I'm same just here height. to support my lady love. This choice has been eating her up inside. It's an important decision, and I want to do anything I can to help. I think she made a good choice. With you, I mean. Yeah, I'm happy about that. I'm really glad that she ended up getting married to him and I let him in and stuff. If I had denied him, would the other, like, the Mavga lady be in here instead? Why the princess listens to you, I will never understand. It's like you're the only two people in the dead mum's club. My mother's terrible. That should count for something. Oh my god. Hopefully your words will not sway Desdemona on future matter. The dead mum's club. That's so mean. <laughs> I'm glad calmer heads prevailed. At least for now. We did what we can. Okay, I think I'm good to head out. Cecil, do you have anything else to tell me? Hey, you spoke well today, Lil. Thank you. Thanks. One more message for you today. I was instructed to tell you to head over to Malcolm's to meet the advisors. Good luck. Oh, to Malcolm's? Okay. Let's go. None of the advisors were there to give their opinion, so I wonder if they're upset about that. I mean, if I would be upset because if I was an advisor and then they didn't let me advise them. I still don't know how I feel about the advisors. Half the time I'm like, oh, they're pretty cool. They help me out with situations, you know, things like that. But then sometimes they make choices and I'm like, a little sketchy, a little scary. Not sure if I would agree. Okay, let's go in here. What I don't understand is why would they have summoned her to a meeting without us there? Where's the fun in that? Hello. Without at least one of us there. And we all know it should have been me. Striker. You really believe that, don't you? When it comes down to the serious, important things that affect this kingdom, I think they'd rather take advice from the strategic mind of a ranking military officer. Maybe. Rather than the two cents of a goofy, hopped-up lunatic with questionable taste in fashion. Or a lousy court jester. I thought that the first one was describing the court jester. Yeah, ouch! We were both in the firing line on that one. Well, all that being said, you still weren't asked to join said quorum, but she was. And she is here. I'm right here. What? She is here. She's here. She's here. Lil is here. I really have to work on my subtlety. Ew. Ah, Lil, you're here. We heard you got summoned to talk to the queen and her new choice of partner for some kind of special quorum. How was it? Was it boring? What kind of boring things did they talk about while you were there? Tell us. Hmm. I probably shouldn't say. I think if they wanted you to know what they talked about at the meeting, they would have invited you. She won't tell us anything. She's as useless as you two are. What? I take offense to that. Offense to what? Sorry, I got distracted. Can I go now? You're dismissed. 
Yeah, I don't know if I wanted to tell them because what if then they were like, oh, maybe what if they want them to get the power crystals? I'd rather just keep it the way it is. Let's go to Garby's shop because I think I have some things that I can, uh, I think I have some things I can sell. I don't actually know if I have anything I can sell. I know I have things I could buy. Oh, it's raining. I'm coming, Garby. Welcome to Garby. Okay. Really? You mean you don't have any left? Oh, shoot. I wouldn't have if I didn't hide a few away from my best customer. Aw, I'm your only customer. You were my only customer, but now that I cornered the mage market, I don't know if I'll be able to keep these crystals in stock. Well, the good ones anyway. The mages didn't seem to have too much interest in the cheapo ones. Hey, by the way, before you get to shopping, this blowtorch you sold me with Fosse carved onto it? Yeah? I've had the hardest time selling it. Maybe you'll want it back. Might come in handy. And I'll sell it to you for just four gold. Oh, sure. There might be a reason I need the blowtorch. Okay. Let's see. 81, so I could do... I could do one of the 50s and then get one of these for 30. So let's do let's do Dakota ring and then I'll get one of those okay I think that's all I needed I really hope that the blowtorch doesn't come back to bite me Lil how goes the battle of the southern gate same old how are things around here holding up Great! Business is better than ever. Something about war and the idea of impending doom really gets people out to the bar. Makes sense. That's good? You bet it is! If this keeps up, we'll finally be able to get this place up to code. Nice! Then we can get rid of the rats. Nice! We don't have rats! I mean, we do, but technically they have us. What? Turns out they own the building and we just rent from them. Okay. But if we make enough money, we can buy out from under them. As far as landlords go, they aren't the worst. I could do without all the hissing. Hey, that reminds me. Lil, you got a letter in the mail. <gasps> oh. How did that rem... Never mind. A letter? From who? Is it my dad? From Hamish. Oh. A letter from dad? Gimme. Oh, look how excited she gets. That is so cute. Hey, sweet pea. How's everything back home? I'm doing okay here. I've gotten to know a lot of the guys. Then when they don't come back from battle, I get the chance to get to know a few more. Oh. I miss you. I know you might be scared right now, but don't be. It'll take tougher stuff than this little war to do in your old dad. Please let me know that you're all right. Or even if you're not. I need to hear how you're doing. I love you, Lil. Dad. That's so sweet. What a cute letter. Love you too, Dad. But what should I write back to him? If I tell him things are tough here, he might worry and get distracted in battle. But if I tell him I'm doing well, he might feel like I don't need him and then get distracted in battle. He's <laughs> easily distracted. <laughs> he does seem like an easily distracted person. Oh boy, neither answer seems right. Are you talking to me? No. <laughs> let's let's be positive Lil will write a letter that suggests everything is going great in order to make her father feel better are you sure yeah or was that bad there that should do it Hey, Arda, mind making sure this gets to where it needs to go? Sure thing, Lil. Thank you. Wait, wait, oh, they both want to talk. We're all thinking of your dad, Lil. Me too. Well, if it isn't my old pal, Lil. Oh, so now you remember me. Always did, kiddo. Just had to play it cool while at my legitimate place of business. Okay. My former legitimate Ooh, place of business, that did is. Did you lose your job? Oh no, what happened? Tough to say, kid. Could have been any number of things. Change in management, downsizing on account of the war. 
It was probably the illegal gambling operation you were running out of the concession stand. Tough to say, kid. Regardless, I'm here on official bookie business. I've come to collect a debt from Hamish. <sighs> Sounds about right. How much does he owe you? 30 gold, and I've got the marker to prove it. Sorry, I don't have that kind of money on me. Either come back tomorrow and I'll see if I have the money, or wait for Hamish to come back from the war. Eh, both those options sound lousy. Tell you what, let's forget the debt altogether. But tell Hamish I ain't taking any more of his markers. See you around. Okay, I guess. Oh look, my little buddy. Shh, Lil, I'm being discreet. Isla bet me five gold that I couldn't steal a bottle of fizzy when Arda's distracted. How are you planning to do that? I figure if I wait long enough, one of the rats will bite her and she'll freak out and maybe run around a bit. Solid plan. There are rats literally everywhere. Okay. I think I've done everything I need to do. Oh yeah, hit the hay. We did everything we needed to do today. Today was a good day, I think. I'm a little anxious because I made some pretty big choices, but... I'm hoping that it's slight it's a slight illusion of choice and that nothing too crazy will happen. Reunited with his darling whelp, Grumpkin T. Dankworth was a changed man. Together the two traveled through Kaladar, sailed Lake Inez, and even summered in Fireball Canyon. He laughed as he had never laughed in all his days, and their nights were filled with music and wine, music and love. They ran holding hands through fields of flowers. On one such sprint sprint, Grumpkin clutched at his chest. His heart had overflowed. More accurately, he suffered a massive heart attack. Try as he might to revive his former master and now true love, Welp was unable to resuscitate the old man. A simple funeral was held, and the widower Welp counted himself lucky to have ever had such a love as this. I killed him? What? As for his substantial riches, they were held by Mr. Dung, head of BS, until such time as Mr. Dankworth's will was read. The old man had donated the entirety of his fortune to the GLA. A small flower garden was built in his honor outside of their headquarters. That's so insane. Julian. Thanks to his timely arrival back in the sprawl, Julian was able to prepare a lavish birthday party for his best friend Gary. Every goblin, troll, halfling, cyclops, and mole person who was anyone was there. It was a bright spot in what had otherwise been a dark few months for the sprawl. As a birthday present, Julian gave Gary a pure, unrefined power crystal that he received from the visiting miners. The glint of its unearthly glow reflected in Gary's eyes as he inserted the powerful crystal into his practice wand. He thanked Julian profusely for this most precious present. It never left his sight from that day on. The next day, Julian presented the plans he was carrying to the city council. The plans detailed an extensive tunnel system to be dug underneath the walls of the sprawl, which would allow food to be secretly and safely moved into the sprawl right under the enemy's nose. After a short period of deliberation, the council realized just how hungry they all were and unanimously, 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 oh my god, unanimously approved the plan. Someone will be arriving to start digging the tunnel systems too, but it's all on the up and up and pretty hush hush. With new plans for bringing food into the city, working their way through the bureaucracy of the sprawl, there were enough rations for the refugees from Scarborough to eat and a space was made for them at the refugee camp, springing up down at the docks. The Duchess was not impressed by her new surroundings, but to be honest, she is a very difficult person to please. Swift justice was visited upon the traitor who lowered the drawbridge at Castle Scarborough in the middle of the night, allowing the enemy to enter and take control of the duchy. The villain was hanged in the town square. Brutal? Certainly, but this is war, and it's better to be safe than sorry. Plus, it made for a fine day's entertainment, as there are no video games in the sprawl to keep people amused. Did anything happen with the people I drafted? No. <gasps> Oh my god. Battle. Oh my god, that was a good call then. The garrison stationed at the Sprawl's secret western food depot successfully repelled the invading Petridarian forces. The Sprawl's reserve food stores are safe from the enemy's greedy hands and empty stomachs. Bosco repre rep bo blah, blah. Bosco's repressed feelings and lifetime of compensating at the gym led to him 
led him to fight impressively on the battlefield, inspiring all around him. Elmer John went home and talked things over with Glorianne. They called the engagement back on and got married soon after. Okay, so they ended up being fine. Oh, we did it. Okay, I was like, is this a mini level? What am I supposed to do? Leading to the okay, so that was, uh, I think, level eight of Little Guardsmen. That was really fun. Um, I'm excited to see. I feel like we're getting really close to the end of the game and we're starting to wrap some things up. So I'm excited to see what happens today. So definitely, guys, if you enjoyed the video um, or if you enjoyed watching my playthrough, subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!